If you were going down in a plane crash and had to choose one item to take with you, which one would you choose? One, a spare tire. Two, a briefcase full of money. Or three, a parachute. Only the parachute, like Jesus, will save your life and save you from hell in eternity. All of the world's lies can't save you. Only the truth of Jesus Christ's eternal life can. If there is no afterlife, you won't be disappointed. But if there is, and you are unprepared, disappointment is the least of the horrible feelings you will experience in hell. Jesus is the only hope of eternal life. He opens a door that no man shuts, and shuts the door that no man opens. Revelation 3 a. If a Christian is wrong, there is not much loss. But if an atheist is wrong, he is lost forever. Without Jesus, you are going to hell. Life is short, heaven is forever. Who is worse off, the Christian who is inconvenienced a little while, or the atheist who is tortured forever? This is not all there is. My friends, this is as bad as it gets for a Christian and as good as it gets for a non-believer. No Jesus and no peace experientially. Have no Jesus and have no peace. You can only find your way to God with the right directions. And who better to tell you than Jesus who is already there with God? Believe on Jesus and you shall be saved. Acts 16.31 if the beginning of the Bible is true, the end is also. Do you own a Bible? Have you studied the Bible? Do you believe it is the ultimate authority? How can you judge something if you don't own, study, or read even the Holy Bible? Not believing the Holy Bible makes it no less true. Either something caused the universe or nothing did. How did nothing, a lesser thing, cause a greater thing to happen, which is against the law of thermodynamics, the second law? Entropy. And how did nothing explode from nothing? Simply nonsense. Something had to explode. When you take away millions and billions of years, evolution looks really stupid. Man made a monkey out of himself, but God did not create him that way. Rapid geologic formation of polystrata fossils are a testimony to history of what God has done. Millions of years of fossils prove evolution false because they don't exist. Fossils are really a gospel tract because they are a record of Noah's flood showing God's br brilliance in making things to reproduce after their kind and only you only get fossils when they are buried very quickly. The wonderful diagrams of how evolution is supposed to have happened cannot be seen in the rocks. Once fossils appear, they appear suddenly and don't change, being inherently stable, such as you find in Noah's flood, recorded in the Bible. Polystrate trees show rapid catastrophic burial. They go through many strata of time and had no roots so they didn't grow there. Some even have leaves still attached and trees every year lose their leaves as the polystrate trees did not take long to bury. And it takes many years for sediment layers formation so we have been told by evolutionists. If you have a tree that is 30 meters through rock and the following logic is obvious. One, it was buried in less time than the tree goes to rot in. And two, all the layers didn't slowly get there one on top of the other. If people don't believe Moses and the prophets, they won't believe even if one rose from the dead. That's Acts six, or Luke 16.31. You can find more information about polystrate trees on askjohnmckay.com or Darwin on the Rocks, which is a DVD and book. You can also search for it on the web. In the Old Testament, God had to pour out judgment on the world. In the New Testament, Jesus was God's punishment poured out on Calvary, but those whom have not been covered by Jesus are still under penalty for their sin. As Romans 3.23 says, 
All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. In Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. In Romans 5.8, God demonstrated his love in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. If evolution is true, there should be no more death. No death at all, because there is no sin. If God didn't create the universe, what business does he have judging it? Evolution must reject God, or we would be accountable to him, not whatever we want. Count your blessings, get rich quick. It's the easiest way to earn money. History is Jesus told throughout his one word, universe, one uni, verse, word, creation. As Romans 1.20-25 says, Since the creation of the universe, his invisible attributes have been clearly seen, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not glorify God, nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into corruptible things like birds and beasts and four-footed creatures, worshiping the creation rather than the creator who is worthy to be praised forever and ever. Amen. Do you know your basic instructions before leaving earth? It's your Bible. Life is short, heaven is forever. We rarely realize how fragile life is. You never know when you are going to go. So, you should be ready at any time. 2 Corinthians 6 2. Today is the day of salvation. He who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose is no fool, as Jim Elliot says. Galatians 6 7 says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Do you consider yourself a good person? Have you ever lied, even once? And if you say no, you've lied. What does that make you? A liar. Have you ever stolen anything, even a pen, or a few minutes on the time clock? Then you are a thief. Have you ever hated anyone? According to Matthew 5.21, you are the same as a murderer. Have you ever had impure thoughts? Then it is the same as if you had committed adultery, as Jesus says in Matthew 5.28. Christianity is the only religion where anyone died for your sin. It is the only religion where anyone loved you enough to die for your sin. Christianity is the only religion whose founder was heard from after dying. And Christianity is the only religion that had salvation by grace instead of works. Aspirin and arsenic both come in tablet form but are very different. Religions are the same, counted by differences, not similarities. Evil is the greatest evidence for a good God because without God's goodness, we would not have a reference for what is not good. The opposite of good is evil. Good and evil mean right and wrong, which requires an absolute moral law given by an absolute moral law giver, God. God gave us the Ten Commandments so we could show righteousness. No righteousness. Jesus is the only righteousness and able to die in our place as the perfect sacrifice. If you trust, if you can't trust Jesus with your life, how are you going to trust him with eternity? This is as bad as it gets for a believer in Jesus and as good as it gets for an unbeliever. If you forget me, you have lost nothing, but if you forget Jesus and what he did for you, you have lost everything. What do you say if someone asks you, how could God ever send anyone to hell if he is a good God? That puts me in a predicament. I have to choose between you and Jesus. Jesus spoke more about hell than he did heaven. And you are right, God doesn't send anyone to hell. They simply arrive there by walking away from God. And when you go far enough, you end up in hell. 
All the world's religions can be summed up in six letters. Every religion except Christianity says do. Christianity says done. By a loving God. Keeping health in the forefront of our thinking keeps us thinking about heaven and also does three things. One, keeps our love of the Lord Jesus alive, appreciating his amazing gift and being in awe and wonder of it. To, as Romans 6.23 says, the gift of God's eternal life. Two, it keeps the fear of the Lord and his justice alive, so we never grow prideful, as Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 says, By grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And three, it keeps our wanting to witness alive with sharing what God has done for us and fulfilling the Great Commission. <coughs> as Matthew 28 20 says, All power has been given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore into all nations, and make ye disciples of all men, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them everything I have commanded you. And lo, I will be with you always, even till the end of the earth. Evil proves the existence of a good God. Without good, we wouldn't be able to tell evil. Good and evil mean right and wrong. Christianity is narrow-minded and intolerant of evil. Matthew 7.13 Enter in by the narrow gate, for broad is the path that leads to destruction, and many there be that go therein. Christianity is specific, outlining how to get to heaven by the one who has been there, Jesus, in his word, the Holy Bible. As Jesus says in John 14.6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. In Acts 4.12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And 1 Timothy 2.5, There is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ. If you put all your hope in one thing, what would it be? Anything but Jesus results in hell. God owns heaven, and he says who enters, not Joe Smo from Reno, Nevada. God, like you, would not let someone in your house if they said they were a good person, and Buddha, Muhammad, Joseph Smith, or Krishna said you were, or they were a good person either. He doesn't know them. God does know Jesus, and if you accept Jesus, you and God are related and he accepts you because of Jesus. It's an adoption process. The enemy shall not take us. We shall not be wrapped. We shall be raptured before God's wrath. 1 Timothy 4:16 through 18. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ shall rise, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Are you ready for anything? How about the end of the world? Second Peter 3.10 says, The day of the Lord shall come like a thief in the night, and the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. And the earth, and all the works of, the element shall melt with fervent heat. If you were to die today, would you know for certain that you would go to heaven? How do you know? Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. It's the only way to really know. The Second Timothy 4.2 says, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Exhort, reprove, refute, with all patience and doctrine. And as Matthew 9, 37-38 says, The need, the harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Pray that the Lord of the harvest will send laborers into his harvest. 
now I'd like to pray a prayer for you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you, lift up his countenance unto you, and give you peace. Number 6, 24 through 27. Or Matthew 5, 1. We are justified by faith and have peace with God, and that through Jesus Christ. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep watching.